Let me be straight up with you. Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number is a very poor sequel. You might say it would be unfair to judge Wrong Number off the merits of its predecessor, but this game makes a conscious effort to be judged as a continuation of the previous game, so I'll be comparing it to the original. If I had to sum it up in one sentence, I'd definitely say they went bigger, but they didn't go better. Let's break it down. If you aren't familiar with the concept of Hotline Miami, the best way to describe it would be to call it a 2D top-down action brawler. You take control of a character with access to a variety of melee and ranged weapons. Your goal upon entering a stage is to brutally murder all of its enemies before moving on to the next floor. It's as simple as that. In the first game, these levels were broken up by quick 30 second intro and outro segments used to set up the mission and cool down the player respectively. And that's about it. Let me start with my first gripe with Hotline Miami 2. The story is beyond convoluted. Throughout the game you'll be jumping between the perspectives of 11 different sets of characters across 3 different time periods. Some of these take place before the events of the first game, while some take place after. Either way, I didn't play the first game for the story. The previous installment featured a silent protagonist with little to no explanation of the events that were happening until the final chapters of the game. It was very vague, but it wasn't the focus. Hotline Miami 2, on the other hand, seems to take its story a bit too seriously. It wouldn't be that big a deal to me, but the pages of dialogue you have to go through to proceed to the action really sours it for me. Perhaps my biggest issue is that even if I wanted to try to understand the story, there are just so many characters that I cannot bring myself to care about any of them. You're constantly interrupted from one character's story to jump into someone else's, with no exposition or explanation of their motives. If you're going to try to take your story seriously this time around, you have to make an effort to make me care about this ridiculous roster of characters, something wrong number completely flops in my opinion. Oh, and the ending sucks by the way, being so ambiguous that only the most devout fans of the series could have any clue what actually just took place. But I can easily look past a poor story attempt in a game like this, because the original Hotline Miami formula was something I didn't think really needed to be improved. Don't get me wrong, the first game certainly wasn't perfect, but they had the formula down to a T. All it really needed was a little more polish. One thing I loved about Hotline Miami was the freedom it allowed you in approaching each situation. One of the main features of the previous game was the use of various masks resembling perks for your character. You had one that made you move faster, one that made your punches lethal, one that made knocking down doors lethal, and the list goes on. Levels in the first game were compact enough for the player to be able to case the joint and plan out your strategy. You also had options. You could carefully plan your movements and take out enemies one by one, room by room. You could play the role of the silent assassin using only melee weapons so as not to attract enemies to your position. Or, you could go in absolutely guns blazing and rack up huge combos to get a high score. This is why I loved Hotline Miami so much, and as for wrong number, it completely does away with those options. Instead of giving the player the freedom to tackle any situation in whichever way they prefer, wrong number forces you into the style the devs want you to play, be it with certain characters, enemy types, or level designs. In terms of characters, forcing you into a certain playstyle allows for some more interesting combat scenarios. For example, Alex and Ash is a character I'd call my favorite and my least favorite at the same time. One sibling wields a chainsaw whom you control in real time, while her brother wields a gun that can be fired over her shoulder, lagging a few steps behind at all times. This is a perfect example of what I feel Hotline Miami 2 has to offer. Playing as Alex and Ash is one of the most exhilarating experiences in gaming I've had in recent memory, but it doesn't always work. Your gunman is going to get consistently stuck on objects and lagging far behind you, killing any sort of momentum you had going into a stage. If you aren't extremely careful, this sort of thing will lead to your death many, many times, and in a game that requires you to be frame perfect in your actions, this is unacceptable. Most of the other characters don't suffer from the same problems as Alex and Ash, but their abilities are so highly situational I'd rather not even bother in most cases. If there was one thing this game had to nail above all else, it would be the level design, but dear god what the hell happened here? It's just all over the place. Don't get me wrong, there's some really great stages here, but lord when they're bad, they are real bad. The biggest issue is that some of these levels are gargantuan, with vast areas full of nothing but empty space, especially in those Hawaii levels. This leads to either complete and utter frustration, or just pure boredom. Because these levels are so open, if you so much as step one frame out of line, you'll be blasted by an enemy off screen. This isn't challenging, it's just blatantly unfair. 
Literally the only way I could get through these types of levels was to hide in a corner and poke my character out to lure enemies to my hiding place, hence the boredom. It forces you to play like a coward, and that's not how I play Hotline Miami. The developers totally understood this too, evident by the sniper rifle weapon. It's tons of fun to use, but you only get it in late game and for one level. It also doesn't help that because these levels are so gigantic, it takes a ridiculous amount of time to clear one floor, and if you manage to screw up right on that last enemy, say goodbye to 5 minutes worth of progress. Yes, I get it, Hotline Miami is designed to kick your ass, you're supposed to get frustrated and die a lot, but it just doesn't work on this scale. These levels should not take anyone half an hour to complete. They're so long that I almost couldn't be bothered to finish the entire game after learning how many chapters were left in the story for me. This game is long, and it overstays its welcome. It's such a shame because some levels are absolutely amazing in concept and execution, like the bank heist. However, the good here is just too bogged down by the bad. The bugs in this game are just the icing on the cake. I didn't encounter too many bugs, but those that I did really brought me out of the game, one of which included not being able to pick up an essential key item. And because I couldn't pick it up, I had to do the entire level all over again. The rest pretty much boiled down to poor AI and the finicky door mechanics present in the first game. And that in itself is a huge shame, because it's a perfect example of how I feel about this game. There are so many interesting things going for this game, like the new weapons and abilities, interesting set pieces, and a kick-ass soundtrack, but the developers didn't bother fixing what was wrong with the previous game first. It really lacks polish. I tried really hard to like this game, but at every turn it managed to disappoint me. You're probably better off just playing the first game.